Ladies and gentlemen, I very much regret that I cannot be with you in person, but I want to thank very warmly the Chicago Council on Global Affairs for this kind invitation to speak very briefly to you today. I hope to contribute to your discussions through a short overview of where we are with the development of a global compact on migration and why this process, and of course its outcome, matter. In 2016, all member states of the United Nations adopted the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants, in which they recognized the need to develop a global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration. Member states also agreed on a parallel but separate process to develop a compact on refugees. Refugees are clearly defined in international law and they are protected by the, by the 1951 Refugees Convention. They number some 20 million people in the world today, an unwanted record and by definition demand urgent protection from the persecution that they face at home. That refugee process is being managed by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. My own focus is on those migrants numbering well over 200 million who are not refugees. They include the majority who have taken up residence in a foreign country with their paperwork fully in order and yet who still often face many forms of discrimination and those whose status is, for a variety of reasons, irregular and for whom the consequences of their precarious status can be life-changing. They also encompass those people on the move, including particularly vulnerable people, most tragically epitomized in the hellish situation in which thousands find themselves either drowning at sea or trapped in places such as Libya. In short, the reality of migration is a very far-ranging one. It encapsulates some of the most pressing humanitarian and moral dilemmas. It touches directly on notions of equality, actually too often inequality. It demands discussions of identity as communities change and evolve. It is one of the most politically contentious issues of our time. And it raises questions of huge economic significance. To give but one example, Migrants send back to their home countries an average of 15% of their income, which represents more than three times what the world's richest states give in official development assistance. Migration is also an immutable reality. It has been with us as long as humans have existed. Indeed, demographic indicators, both population decline in some regions and growth in others, our climate, the changing nature of work, all these and other factors suggest that migration is not only here to stay, but is here to grow. It is, in short, an issue that requires a global approach, one built on cooperation and consensus, aimed at ensuring that the decision people make to move is taken freely, can be executed safely, and is for the benefit of all, the migrants themselves, of course, their community of origin, and their place of destination. The compact will be negotiated in New York over the next six months, building on the outcomes of several thematic and regional consultations that were held all over the world in 2017, and on a report of the UN Secretary General, uh, which explains his vision and will be released later this week. The Global Compact for Migration will be the first intergovernmentally negotiated agreement to cover all dimensions of international migration in a comprehensive manner. It is once in a generation opportunity to strengthen international cooperation in the field of migration. And I would like to share with you three reflections to stimulate your discussions today. First, the Global Compact should address two distinct, though connected, set of challenges. Maximizing the benefit of migration for all and developing a strategic response to large, mixed movements of migrants and refugees. Second, the Compact should be action-oriented and foster an era of implementation 
where many long-standing commitments on migration can be realized, to the tangible benefit of all involved, migrants, host communities, and the people they left behind. Third, the compact is a great opportunity to bring gender-related considerations at the heart of international cooperation around migration. We cannot afford a gender-blind compact that fails to recognize and address the different needs, vulnerabilities, capacities, and contributions of women who constitute today some 48% of international migrants. I wish you all a very successful meeting, and I look forward to hearing about the outcomes of your discussions today. Thank you very much.